and Tuesday morning with friends. And there we go. Dove and Myrna, this mic is all yours. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Hi Regis. How are you this morning? Top of the morning to you, dear. Yes. Yes, yesterday I was talking to Susan and she said, ask me the same question. How are you doing? And I said, great. You know, it's funny. I said to her, I always answer that way. Whenever anybody ever asks me, how are you feeling? I always say, great. Um, I just automatically, uh, I just automatically respond that way. And I like that I do. I really do because I never think of anything else other than feeling wonderful at the moment. Um, and that's just how I feel right now at this very moment, feeling really good, no matter what, no matter what I experience uh, that may be, be adverse to the truth of who I am. I mean, we all have those experiences. Um, I, I don't really rely on any of those uh, adverse experiences. I like to think that I'm feeling great all the time. How about you, Dove? Yes, and we have to sometimes... Uh change your mind about things. I, I, I think I just heard Sharon say, you know, whatever happened, that wasn't me, that was my ego. And right. I just put up in the chat something from the Cross of Miracles that speaks directly to that. It says, when you feel guilty, remember huh, that the ego has indeed violated the laws of God, but you have not. And Jesus says, leave the sin to the ego to me. And then he says, that's what atonement is for. I mean, my only responsibility is to accept that what I think happened never happened. But he says, wait a minute, there's one thing you got to take care of. And then he uses the word but. And whenever there's a but, even Jesus uses but, it means there's something else that's still hanging out. But until you change your mind about those whom your ego has hurt, the atonement cannot release you. So if you're leaving people out there that you have excluded from the atonement, then the atonement doesn't work for you. Either all are included equally as innocent or none at all. So then he goes on to say, while well, you feel guilty your ego is in command because only the ego can experience guilt. And then he says, this need not be, and that comes in the uh, Courts of Miracles, chapter four, section four, called this need not be. And that's paragraph five. With that, yeah. I'll over to you. Yes, yes. Well, that's today's lesson. Uh, truth will correct all errors in my mind. And, um, <clears throat> You know, and, and it, it goes on to, to tell us that, you know, as Ken Wapnick says, that, you know, we won't lose our uh, individuality overnight. It doesn't happen that way. We don't discard our ego once we feel that uh, we understand uh, what the ego is. And um, it doesn't work that way because uh, we really need to you now train our mind to obliterate the thoughts that come to us that are not peaceful. <clears throat> and anything other than peace uh, is, is anything other than peace, as I said, or love uh, doesn't come from the source of truth. It comes from the ego's dictates. And so it's really a matter of now sorting out. I understand what the course means when it says we have to sort it out, recognizing, okay, oh, who, who, am, who am I really? Am I what I think I am or what I am or am I what Jesus tells me that I am? And of course, in miracles. And what does Jesus tell me? Tells me I'm nothing but truth and love and and God's holy creation. And uh, and we have to now start buying into that because we don't believe any of that about ourselves. Uh, and it takes a lot of uh, determination to want to change to the point that we can now enjoy the love and the, the truth that we begin to feel when we're accepting uh, the God concept into our mind. 
I find it, and I really find it when I speak to um, when I speak to Jesus. Jesus is is the 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 entity within myself who is me that gives me all the answers, any answer that I need. No question ever goes unanswered, and that's really you know I've trained my mind to now connect with with Him uh, as the course's author, and of course the uh, the person the the person who goes back thousands of years starting all of this then and and really keeping the uh you know the momentum going until we reach the course in miracles many years later the 1960s i believe uh it's really um a, a, a matter of faith and once you begin to trust which i trust completely the Jesus part of me that I really come to love so much, uh, it really does give you a lot of headway into what you really need to be embodying and learning and now uh, effectuating. With therefore, in other words, giving it, extending it, you know, knowing that it's you, you you don't have to be afraid to extend it because you understand it as truth and you can stand by it. And um, so I, I really love being a part of that um, understanding where I'm not special. I'm not special. I am a, I am love, uh, which is not special love. True love is is God's love. Uh, I use Jesus as the metaphor, the, the, the name that I refer to, and the, the connection that I have uh, so clearly. And I love having that. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, you told me to watch something which is called Testament. It, it was very good, really. It was about the, um, the uh, Moses and the Ten Commandments. It was very, very good because... What I found interesting, and I'd like to get your take on this, was that it was a docudrama. So everybody speaking, you know, gave their input about, you know, the Moses and so forth. And what nobody could really answer, nobody really could come up with the answer is why did God cause all this killing, all this, you know, there was so much killing uh, and so much uh, uh, death as a result of what, you know, when, when uh, Pharaoh just refused to give in and all he experienced after that was death and killing and his soldiers were trampled and so forth. It was, it was interesting that nobody could really come to a conclusion about that. Do you have any ideas about that? Wow. And that well is very deep. It's a very deep well, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, first of all, uh if you think that God wanted death to be real, uh, that obviously is not something that's real at all because, you know, it's a course of miracles. So it's, it's kind of my Bible, my guidebook. There is no death. Uh, so let's look at appearances. It, it appeared that, that many people were were not around anymore that's that's what appears uh you can ask the same question why would god let his people be slaves for two three hundred years uh i think you have to go back to uh recognizing that i'm the dreamer of the dream yeah that this is a dream and i don't care if you have the rabbis doing a documentary on it and they're taking it from the Old Testament, obviously. And the one thing about that thing, and I recommend it to anybody who who is kind of interested in, in, in Bible history. You know, I always kind of accepted. I mean, you know, I certainly, when I was a kid, I, I went to Hebrew school and I loved the Bible history. Uh, but I got to admit, Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments kind of, was the factual Moses story for me for most of my life. You know, I thought that that was the way it happened. The one thing that happened in this story called Testament story of Moses is you realize that hardly anything in, uh, in Cecil B. DeMille's Hollywood movie, The Ten Commandments, 
is the way the Bible has it. And you can be sure that the rabbis who were uh, uh, commenting, and of course, that they're all alive now, were commenting on, on their knowledge of the Bible. And of course, they kind of set the record straight. As far as your question, why would God do this? Uh, God has nothing to do with this world. You know, that, that, that's... That's that's pretty much what the whole course is about. Uh, we uh, thought that we could do a better job than God, right? You know, when a tiny mad idea entered into the eternity and the Son of God remembered not to laugh, he said, hey, listen, if you don't want to make me special, I'll make me special and I'll do a better job than you. So everything that happens in this world basically is, and, 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 and we made this this image of ourselves called the ego that loves being special and and the ego did make this world that's that's why lesson number one excuse me lesson number one is nothing i see here means anything and the idea that nothing i see here means anything literally means that all the stories of moses and the slaves and this and that it doesn't really mean anything unless you want to give meaning to it and that's lesson one and lesson two. And the only reason I want to give meaning to it is, oh, well, I know that, you know, that that's that's what happened 3,000 years ago. Like, really? We don't even know what's happening today. I was I was looking at one of my posts on TikTok, and, uh, and the guy says, you know, as we enter adulthood, we get upset if the if the grocery store changes where my favorite product is. And I noticed the other, the other. Ken Wapnick <laughs> is calling me. <laughs> uh, well, that, that shows you there is no death if he's calling you. <laughs> it proves it. <laughs> I, I, I say Ken. You're right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Ken Wapnick is calling me. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, I love it. <laughs> he probably is calling you. I believe that. I'm serious. If you see it. <laughs> I have a feeling it's somebody right here who says, you're always talking about Ken, so I'll have Ken call you and show you there is no death. Anyway. Um, <laughs> you simply, you, you, That's you, great. I love that. Yes. But nothing that him. happens in this world is true. Nothing that happens in this world is real. <laughs> that is certainly not 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 real. What God creates is eternal, is changeless. Let me let me get back to that story. The story of if 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 you if, if your grocery store changes where your favorite product is to another aisle, uh, you get upset. And I noticed that that's exactly what happened. Actually, it wasn't even another aisle; it was just across the aisle. <laughs> and I'm looking and. And the guy says, no, he just pointed his finger. It's across the aisle now. But, but, but when things change, we get upset. So what I want to kind of talk a little about is, uh, I don't know if this happened uh, when we were doing yesterday, uh, uh, Karen and I do uh, The Justice of God, Chapter 25. I think it happened there, or it could have happened... Uh, I, I was in another group, uh, a group with uh, with Lynn that uh, that Glenn uh, Hoberman uh, runs. But I don't, I don't know where it started, but it, it came to me. Someone said the ego can only mess with your the, the the purpose of this world is to mess with your head. The purpose of this world is to mess with your head. And I realized that the ego can only mess with our belief system, which are our mistaken beliefs. And, 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 and in a way, that's helpful because the world is really a classroom where we come to learn lessons. And as my card says, be grateful for your triggers, things that upset you. Someone's changed your favorite product from one side of the aisle to the other, you know. Be grateful because they reveal your mistaken beliefs. So the ego can only mess with our mistaken beliefs. It can't mess with anything that's real because the ego has no idea of what's real and what's not. Everything the ego makes is unreal. 
So uh, it came to me today that the only mistaken beliefs uh, is if you, you find yourself upset or depressed or uh, having anxiety, you know, one of those floating anxiety attacks, uh, worried about something, concerned about something, you're you're looking at something that has no value whatsoever. And I put lesson one thirty three together with, with with everything that I I've been kind of accumulating the last twenty four hours on how the ego uses this world to mess with your head. It can't mess with anything that has any value. What's valuable belongs to all of us <laughs> eternally. <clears throat> Excuse me. What has no value, what has zero value, is something that happens in time, and things in time change. So anything that changes, the ego can mess with your head. And if you're valuing something in time, you're asking to be worried and stressed out and upset because it's not real. You're believing in something that's not real. That's our mistaken beliefs. Back over to you, dear. Yes, the purpose of this world is to mess with your head. And that's that really says volumes when you think about it, because, uh, you know, up until we begin to understand who we truly are and recognize the purpose, our true purpose in this world, uh, we do experience continual uh, messing with our heads. We mess with our own heads. Things come up all the time that, you know, when nobody's around, that my head is, becomes messed up uh, over something that uh, never happened. Uh, we I think happened or think might happen or uh, and and the the purpose of the world is to keep the ego in 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 motion to keep the ego going going and going and um, you know I I think uh, people who try to control other people um, governments that try to control which do control people is really when you think about it is to keep people in fear. And um, that's the way to control to, to be is to, to keep um, an individual or a group of individuals or a nation in fear. So, um, you know, we're constantly having our heads uh, played with our thoughts and we, but we can get away from all of that. We just have to just turn it off and recognize there's only one thing that I have to concentrate on and that is my purpose, and that is the purpose that to to become um, uh, understanding of what my um, what my truth is. That's the purpose to learn my truth, the truth of of why I'm really here, what I'm really here to do. And it and it's so simple. It's so simple, and yet it isn't easy because you know we're so we're so confirmed. Uh, to recognize or believe that our ego is in charge and that we just allow it, you know, to just run rampant. And as Jesus tells us all the time in the Course in Miracles, that we allow our mind to to roam too freely and that we don't pull our, our thoughts in, we don't reel it in. And by not doing that, then we are continually allowing uh, everything, you know, that has no meaning to to mess us up and and we can only get further into that until we realize that um you just need to get out of it it sounds simple just get out of it just not you know not have those thoughts not uh entertain the thoughts okay so the way i see it is yes i may have those thoughts but I try not to entertain them because now I'm aware of them. And it took years for me to reach that point where I can become aware of what I'm uh, thinking that does not belong there, that does not uh, have any place uh, in, 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 my, in my belief system because it's not true. And how can we not, uh, how can we be fearful if, uh, if, if we know the truth? How can the, the truth is, is is not fearful because it's true. And once we know the truth, um, you know, we have to, um, you know, then, uh, you know, then become more um, accepting of, of the truth as to what we recognize it is. And what is the truth? The truth is one simple thing. The truth is we want to be at peace. We want to not uh, be, uh, 
in pain or um, we want to uh, we want to rid ourselves of that of those those feelings and how do we do that we do that with other, with other souls with other people not to judge not to attack not to uh, go there because when we attack another we're really attacking ourselves and I realize when I'm doing that I can have a thought that uh, is attacking somebody in my thoughts and then I realize well I didn't attack them I just attacked myself how do I feel right now how do I feel I just attack myself and that too takes a lot of practice to see that to recognize the uh you know that um, um feeling that it's always been ingrained in us, you know, the, the, uh, to what has always been taught, what has always been ingrained in our, in our thought system it is not easy to expel. Uh, we can do it if we try. We can do it by practicing. We can do it because we're determined, determined, uh, not to go there anymore, not to feel those, those feelings anymore. And, and, you know, it's very, very hard to, understand to accept that nothing in this world is real but nothing really uh what is real except um what uh what is real what is real is the reality that we're not bodies that we're not separate that we're all together in this in this learning process and we're all here to learn and uh so we do the best we can. Mm. By the way, how did your talk in Bogota go? I tried to tune in, but I wasn't able to. I, I well, I always send you the uh, the uh, YouTube recording if you want. It went went very well. I I find that when uh, I do anything in Bogota, I really enjoy it because uh, after I say a sentence or two, the the uh, translator translates it into Spanish. And in that 30 seconds or a minute that she's translating, it's like, holy, I'm quiet and Holy Spirit gives me the next thing to say. So I'm, so it's, it's, not, it's not the same as teaching here, literally, because you, you have a thought, you share it, and then it's translated into Spanish. So it gives you like a, a, a 30 seconds to a minute to just quiet your mind, not think of the next thing to say. And, Holy Spirit gives you the next thing to say. So I, I always find it very, uh, very peaceful and very pleasant. So uh, I would I would say that that's probably the answer to what you were just sharing. And Myrna, that everything you said was really right on perfect. I just wanted you to know that, that yeah, uh, you, as uh, Jesus said, you know, you're far too tolerant of your mind wandering. It's, it's our silly thoughts that we're entertaining that actually have this uh, uh, a victim of the ego's messing with, with with our mind. It messes with our beliefs and 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 beliefs are translated uh, into uh, into thoughts. So as the uh, Suzuki uh, the the Zen master says, hey listen, those thoughts enter the front of your mind. Uh, let them pass right through and out the back door just <clears throat> just don't uh serve them tea don't entertain your thoughts so as you stop entertaining your thoughts and the ego wants your attention as you stop giving attention to the ego's messing with your mind it starts to feel well i can't mess with this this and it starts to slow down but as long as you're entertaining the thoughts and you know that you're entertaining the thoughts when you get upset at somebody outside of you and the course tells you there's nothing outside of you. So you know at that particular point, you're under the ego's thought system. The ego's thought system says, well, somebody out there uh, said the wrong thing to you. And, you know, you know, aren't you going to attack them back? You know, they attacked you. Aren't you going to attack them back? Kind of sounds like what's going on in, in Israel and Iran. Well, they, well, they attacked us. Uh, Biden says, uh, hey, listen, BB, accept the win, will you? Just relax. He said, no, 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 we, we, have, to, we have to show them, you know, because in our neighborhood, if we don't attack back, uh, people will get the wrong uh, impression about us. So, so we, we have to do something about it. And that's the entire ego thought system. 
Act, react, act, react, attack, defend, attack, defend. That's what the world is all about. That's pretty much why lesson 135, which called, if I defend myself, I'm attacking myself. There's only one self. And Ken Wapnick calls lesson 135 the atonement lesson. I always say, I don't know why he calls it the atonement lesson, but the more I talk about lesson 135, and notice that's the lesson where my favorite par paragraph is, paragraph 18. What can you not accept? If you knew that everything that happens, all events, past, present to come, I gently plan for you, not against you, for you by one whose only purpose is your good. Well, no, we have to show them. There's no them to show. Notice paragraphs 11 through 17 says, uh, a healed mind does not plan. Now, when the war cabinet in Tel Aviv was 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 a meeting, uh, you could you can be sure they they don't call them the war cabinet for nothing. They they see everything as attack, defend, attack, defend. So the world is always a war. But in chapter twenty three, he tells you this is a war you're waging against yourself, and you can be sure. That I mean, Biden's words seem to be very, very powerful words. Accept it as a win. Nothing happened. Let it go. But no, no, no. We're not going to let it go. We're not going to let it go. You got to, you got to do something about it, or else people will think poorly of us. What people? You're talking about yourself. This is a war you're waging against yourself. You got to laugh. You simply got to laugh. Over to you, Myrna. I like that you brought that up because, you know, um, Israel attacked the uh, the embassy, you know, the uh, Iran embassy in Syria. And so now you're right. You, you know, Iran said, OK, now we got to fight you back. So what did they do? They shot missiles into Israel, uh, you, you know, uh, not enough to destroy anything. They just to kind of say, OK, you know, we're going to not going to let you get away with this. And so they didn't do anything radical, really, but the, the, the uh, missiles that went into Israel were just, you know, were able to, they shot them down and that was the end of it. But you're right, you know, it's you attack me, I got to attack you back. I got to show you, I got to show a, a sense of uh, strength. And uh, and it, it happens whether it be individually, or whether it be on a much larger scale, like wars and, and so forth. It, it's, it doesn't just end uh, with uh, just, you know, a, a simple thing. I mean, it, it becomes... Uh, you know, uh, the, the desire to to protect ourselves, even though we're really not protecting ourselves, because you're right, if you look at the concept, the true concept is there's nothing outside of us. What is there to hurt you if there's nothing really there? And you say that a lot, and, you, and, and it's true. You know, you say it enough, and you embody it, you start to believe it, that you begin to realize that uh, there's no room for fear because now you're really understanding that nothing can really hurt you. Really. I'm learning, look, I know that. I know that nothing could hurt me because nothing really ever has hurt me. Look at me. I'm in this time and place. I've been on this earth for quite a long time. Uh, and I can honestly say that, yeah, the only thing that has ever hurt me is what I thought hurt me. Uh, and there's nothing to be afraid of. I've never been... In any kind of situation, I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm still discussing all of this, uh, you know. And it's time to say, what am I afraid of? And I, I kind of like that. I like that that premise. There's really nothing to be afraid of, and there's nothing that's gonna, you know, hurt me. So what is there to be fearful about? There's nothing out there. Once we know that and accept it, and really truly live it, uh, then we can truly be uh, teachers of God. That's what we're here to do anyway, to, to be uh, understanding that uh, we're, we're here to be light workers. You know, if there's anything that has any truth, it's that you are a light worker. We all are. And that we can uh, now make a change, a, a change by that, that uh, belief, that truth. Um, and so I like that, you know, and, uh, you posted right here on the chat, truth will correct all errors in my mind. And it says, as you practice A Course in Miracles, you do not lose your individ individuality overnight. No, you don't. Um, it takes 
takes a, 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 a long time to become truly understanding of what your purpose is. We talk about what my purpose is. Well, my purpose, again, you know, what is the purpose? The purpose is to learn the truth. That's your purpose. Nothing else. In fact, one of the lessons in A Course in Miracles says your purpose strictly is just to be happy. That's all we're asking you to do is just be happy. And that's not so hard to do, is it? Apparently it is very hard to do. You lose your fear, doubt, anxiety, and guilt, all your thoughts of specialness and attack. Well, this is from Ken Wapnick. Um, what's wrong with that? Losing the fear, doubt, anxiety, and guilt, all thoughts of specialness and attack. So that's really what it does come from. Um, uh, you know, anxiety, guilt, and so forth does come from judgment and attack. We attack ourselves when we don't accept ourselves for to who we truly are, when we think of ourselves as being little nothing, uh, you know, we, we do. The ego kind of tears us down all the time. Uh, the ego builds you up, and one day you're up, and you're, uh, you know, walking on top of the world, and the next day you're down. There's no consistency there. The next day you doubt yourself. People who have become celebrated, you know, uh, people who are well-known and have done remarkable things, doubt themselves. Uh, you take an actor who makes a successful movie, he's on top of the world, but his next movie may not be such a success, and now he's doubting himself and fearful again. So the ego is really never uh, truly uh, good, you know, dedicated to uh, making you feel peaceful or happy. So the only place to go is really where you're really loved, where you're really thought of as wonderful, not special, but complete and whole, is, is to God, God's love, to the part of us that is, that is completely understanding of that. And that's why, you know, there's so much conflict, conflict going on between us because we're constantly, you know, fighting that battle. Right, right, Dove? Right, Myrna. That was, <laughs> that was totally terrific, really. Uh, <laughs> a couple of things happened on the way to the forum here. First, I looked in the room and Karen reminded me who it is that got the thing about uh, the purpose of the world is to mess with our head. It came from my old friend, Amy Torres. And some of you know uh, Amy. Uh, she used to teach here at ACM Gather. She taught here for about a year or two uh, back in uh, oh, around 2008, 2009, 10. And um, uh, in fact, Regis plays uh, as, as an introduction to his talks. I think it's her prayer. I'm not, not sure a song or prayer. It comes from Amy Torres, yeah. And uh, a Amy used, used to live here in the New York area, very good friend of John Mundy's. Uh, she then moved out to, I think, like Arizona or something like that. But now she lives in Naples, Florida. But I happened to catch her. She was on, uh, uh, for those people who know, Stephanie and, and Lloyd, that they have a, on every Monday at 12 o'clock, they have a guest speaker. I may be the guest speaker on next Monday. I told them I was available. Uh, so she was the one that actually used the expression, the purpose of the world is to mess with your head. And uh, and, and you know that that's true. And, and I, 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 I don't know exactly what you said, but uh, or basically uh, it's, it's, it's something that, that, that goes on in all of us, you know, what do, what do other people think of me? I, I want other people to think well of me. I, I hope they, they, they don't think that I, you know, there is no they, that's number one. If you're under the laws of God and not under the laws of ego, there's nothing outside of me. Remember chapter 18, section six, beyond the body, there's nothing outside of me. This is what you must ultimately learn. Well, you know, uh, Terry Cole Whitaker, uh, who actually was like a teacher for Marianne Williamson way back in, in the 1970s and early 80s, wrote a book, What Other People Think of Me is None of My Business. But the ego makes it definitely, the ego makes it its, it's business for sure. Kind of brings up what uh, Lynn Johnson just put in, in, the, uh, in, in the chat. Uh, you know, Lynn says she, she adores Amy Torres. Yeah, I do too. 
Uh, her teaching is really wonderful. Uh, Lynn, Lynn said earlier, uh, you want to, Israel wants to show the world that I won't take it. What world? I mean, the only one that's going to suffer, the only one that's going to suffer is the people of Israel if you, if, 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 if you up the ante and the next time they don't send drones, they start with missiles in the middle of the night when you never expect them. These, they told you two weeks ahead of time, we're going to send something there. So they had a lot of time to prepare. And notice, notice if you take them by surprise, and that's what happened back on October 7th, it, it all happened by surprise. Everybody suffers, as Amy, as Amy Anderson says, Amy Anderson says, you know, uh, in, in life, pain is part of being in life. It's just part of life. But suffering is optional. And that's right out of the Cross of Miracles. Suffering is optional. And why is suffering? That? Well, the, the optional is I want to continue. I, you, know, you know, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Really? You got to laugh. Over to you, Myrna. You know, it's funny. We talk about Israel and Iran, but there is no Israel and there is no Iran, is there? And when you kind of stay away from any of that, when you just stay in the, uh, you know, the recognition that I'm all there is, really. And I look around me and everything is peaceful, right? It's peaceful. Uh, I don't have to extend my thoughts to something that, you know, if you want to kind of really take the, the course in miracles, uh, at its total truth, that there is no, there is no, there is no Iran or Israel or or Russia or. Go ahead, go ahead. Everything is peaceful in Boca. Everything, <laughs> of course. But you know what? It would be peaceful anywhere that I am. No matter where I am, it would be peaceful. I just know that. So uh, you know, <laughs> um, and that's uh, truly how I feel. I really do believe that. Doesn't matter where you are, it's just who you are that really matters. It doesn't matter <laughs> where you are, it's where you are. Right. That's You're right. Saying before I ever found the course. It doesn't matter where you are, it's where you are. Oh right. Exactly. You. Exactly. I learned that. I did, I did. I really uh you know, I believe that truthfully. Uh, I was put here in this place in this time for a reason. It just enhances my learning uh, capacity. And then I'm always learning. I never stop learning because if I allow myself to think that I know it all and that I'm, you know, I know the whole course, I mean, I certainly should know it by now. I mean, I've been studying it long enough. But unless you practice the course, it's never going to, or the concepts, the principles of A Course in Miracles, uh, you're not going to feel peace because you, you, it's so easy to, to give in to the fears of, uh, of, of everything that's happening all around you. So my feeling, truthfully, is that, um, that once we let go of, of anything, and I have to really stop myself from watching the news, I do, because of, why am I watching the news? Because I really want to get upset, right? Or else I wouldn't be watching it. So I, I've gotten much, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not, I'm just not going to, you know, to, to, to put myself there. It doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. The truth of the matter is it really doesn't. And if, if it doesn't affect you, then, you know, it doesn't have to affect you. It really doesn't, it's depending. Again, you know, it's the mind that uh, looks for things to, to find, to uh, see that uh, what it's visualizing is only, um, you know, it's not true vision. The Course talks about vision. What is true vision? This truth of, of, of seeing things as they really are and not what we think they are. And, uh, I don't know, this is, uh, the Course in Miracles says it's the fastest way there, but I don't know if it's the fastest way there. I've been studying it a long time. But look where I am. I'm in a good place. I really, really feel that um, I'm uh, in a place where uh, I am supposed to be at this point in time. And if I lose sight of that, uh, I try to get back on track again if I lose sight of it. And, and I manage to do it much more readily now because I'm more aware more uh, my mind has been trained uh, and yours too i see uh, that yours has been because 
you know, you, 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 you say that, you know, which is, you don't say that. I mean, what you say uh, is all based on, on a course in miracles principle, like forget it. You got to laugh. There's nothing out there. We just think that there's, that, that, that what exists out there uh, is, is what is true and available to us, but there's more to it than that. There's so much more to it. Uh, and what can I say except that uh, after a while, you don't even really need words. You just need to just know, you know, just a knowing. Uh, and to know something is to understand it as being true. So I, I turn it back to you, Doug. All righty, yeah. Um, Lynn just put in the chat, ego will just die if it can't complain. Yeah, so... Uh, Everything that we know comes from the past. I mean, you know, I'm always complaining. Well, you know, why don't they do that? Or why, you know, why isn't this true? You know, it's always why, you know, all why questions are always of the ego. You know, the ego is questioning God, you know, hey, God, how come you didn't do a better job? You know what I mean? Uh, so so um, what what? What what comes to me is that whenever we're questioning anything, we're questioning our own worth, our own values, or what it is that I am. And you know, if if if, if I don't feel worthy, if, if I feel that I'm not good enough, I I, I haven't achieved what I, I want to achieve in this world that doesn't exist. Uh, I, I will feel less than and, and always wondering, I'm always in comparison. Ego lives by comparison. Well, what do other people think of me? You know, I, I want I want people to think well of me, but I, you know, I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not there yet. That's always the ego talking to you. Oh, I'm not there yet. No, no. You are God's, I am God's son. I, I am one son we are one son there's, there's no one outside there's no two sons there's no three sons there's one god extended himself and and gave to his son everything that he is god sees himself as totally worthy he sees you as totally worthy and in chapter four section one it says your worth i'll put it here in the chat i put it in the room already your worth is not established by your teaching or learning. Or, and I'm not talking about teaching here at Gather. You, I'm talking about what you do in the world. You know, you, your worth has nothing to do with what you say and do in this world. Your worth is established by God. That means your father who totally sees you as himself who created you as himself. As long as you dispute this, everything that you do, oh, there's the word everything, everything that you do will be fearful, particularly any situation that lends itself to the belief in superiority and inferiority. Oh, well, there's two good words, yeah. Well, I feel I'm better than most people because I'm doing the course, right? Uh, well, I'm not as good as some people because they've been doing the course longer than me. <laughs> you got to laugh. You simply got to laugh. Now, worth comes from recognizing that nothing that I believe to be true and everything that I believe to be true comes from the past. And there is no past. You know, as as as, as Ken Wapnick says, you know, uh, Everything here is a maladjusted solution to a non-existent problem. The Son of God has no problems. He made a world where there's lots and lots of problems, and he thinks he's got to fix the problem. And and you know, I and every time I catch myself trying to do something to fix a problem, I look at myself and laugh. What are you doing, Dov? You're fixing another problem? You know, you really got to laugh. Back over to you, Myrna. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, it's funny you, you say that, uh, okay, I'm not going to watch the news anymore. Well, the ego tells you, well, you know, that's ignorant. The ego will tell you, what do you mean you're not going to watch the news? I mean, now you're just uh, denying what's really there. You know, you're trying to uh, just, uh, you know, make light of something that's very important. I mean, that's what the ego tells us when you think about it. You tell somebody, I'm not watching the news. Well, they think that you're really just uh, kind of sloughing off for something, you know. Uh, the world believes that these things are really important. The world believes that things like that are really very important. When you think about it, if I'm not going to watch the news and I'm not, I'm going to feel uh, and just concentrate on, on what I'm feeling, uh, given the fact that I, I, I just want to be at peace, uh, what's wrong with that yet? You know, the world doesn't understand that. Uh, so it's a really, uh, when you when you say you got to laugh, well, you, gotta, you do got to laugh at that, really. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting. I was watching something on TV last night that you would like. It was something that I found on Nova. It's about AI. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you talk about insanity. AI is becoming so superior that it's becoming smarter than the human brain. And the AI um, played the, a game of chess against the world champion in chess playing, and AI won. Of course, AI won. Uh, so the uh, AI is becoming so superior that we're not even going to recognize anything. We're not going to know who anybody is because they can make you, you, on AI. In other words, you, you won't see the difference. Uh, the, 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 and, and then... You know, when you think about it, the news isn't going to be true anyway, because if AI is taking over, then people can now use it to create whatever they want from it. So it's becoming so escalated that we have to step back and say, you know, we're just going faster and faster. And technology is just so incredible. But it was very interesting to watch. It really was. I mean, wonderful things are done with it as well. Wonderful. Uh, they they, they uh, create pros, prostheses now, arms and legs that really work as good as, as anything you could imagine, showing how it works. Um, so, you know, like anything else, it, it, can be do, it can be used for good or for bad. It can be used to enhance or to diminish. Uh, depending on really how you use it. And that's true of anything. It's true of uh, what we, you know, uh, how we view just about everything, really. Everything has its pros and its cons. So um, I, thought, I thought that's something that you would be interested in because we've discussed AI. Do you know anything about AI at all? Have you seen anything? Marta, honey, you're on one of my favorite subjects. Yes, yeah. So... Uh <laughs> You ought to watch it. It's incredible. You ought to watch that. Um, well, anyway. you're probably not aware. I, I, I watch something almost every day on AI. Uh, yes. uh, let me let me say a, a few things. This world is AI. In other words, yes. before AI came, this world is artificial intelligence. We are art. What do you, what do you think this body is? This is body is like a robot. You know, as Teddy Poppy, who Lynn knows really well, says, hey, listen, this is a the world is a classroom to learn lessons. You, you don't send the son of God in to learn lessons. The son of God doesn't need to learn lessons. You send some test crash dummy who sits in the front seat while, while the manufacturer runs the car into a wall at 30 miles an hour to see what happens. So 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 this world is test crash dummies. That's the original AI. So now they're into a new phase of AI. And, you know, uh, what I said earlier, you know, the son of God says to God, hey, listen, anything that you can do, I can do better. I can do more. More is the Antichrist, by the way. And I'll show you. So if you look at this world, say, in, in 1993, which was only approximately 30 years ago, there was no internet. There was no iPhone. There was no Zoom. There was no nothing. Guys like the guy who uh, heads up uh, Amazon, uh, he took little uh, one-inch ads on the front page of the New York Times. He kind of knew what 
the internet was going to be. He kind of saw it in advance, just like people now see it in advance. And if you think that the stock market, which keeps breaking records almost every day, although not in the last couple couple of days, but the Dow Jones averages, Standard & Poor's, they, they keep hitting new records. Why is it? Why is Wall Street hitting new records when everybody on Main Street knows there's inflation and stagflation? I'm not doing as good as I did four years ago. How come? Well, it's doing that because they are looking at what AI is about to do to this world and to this economy. It's going to be a whole new revolution, not any different than what the internet brought in 1995 and 96. Those people who jumped in at the very beginning said, hey, I know what's going to happen. So yeah, the people who, who, who are seeing what AI is about to do says this whole world is going to be a completely new world and only 5, 10, 15, 20 years out. Hey, listen, if, you, if, if you're listening to uh, Sebastian Blakesley, he said, you better believe it, baby, by 19, by, by, the, by the year 2033, it's going to be a completely new world. You won't even believe it. So things are always changing here in this world. You got to laugh. You simply got to laugh. Back over to you, Myrna. So uh, like I said, you laughed at this once before. I uh, so I'm 82. I have to wait until 1930, until 2033 to see the world change. Can I see a change before that? I have to wait until that. That's a great <laughs> question. I always loved it. <laughs> I don't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, well, you think about that, yeah. But it, but it, but we'll we'll see changes happen much quick, more quickly than that. You know, if you want to look at AI, I mean, that's changing every single day. Um, you can go back to some of the uh, earlier uh, science fiction movies where you know uh, I Robot, where you know the uh, the robot develops a mind of its own. Well, isn't that what could happen when you think about that? If you're creating a brain and a brain to think, unless you kind of establish certain rules, this thing could really just, you know, go off on its own and just uh, do things that perhaps, uh, right? Isn't that a part of what the threat could be as well? You mean, you mean like what we did, you mean? <laughs> you like what we did, right? I mean, didn't I mean didn't Cain kill Abel for nothing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's no different. You're right. We just see it different. Just it just takes on a different form. We call it technology. You know, this, uh, world, this world, which I've been saying for about the last 30, 40 years, is virtual reality. Now, virtual reality was a word that only started about thirty or forty years ago, and remember. Virtual reality is possible only because there's such a thing as a computer. Now, computers came out in the mid-1950s. As a matter of fact, I worked for IBM uh, starting around 1960, and, and computers had just gotten off the ground. This is back, you know, when a computer fills, it was so big, it filled up the size of a room. These days, the same computer power can be found in something that is this big called the iPhone. But in those days, it filled up a whole room. So things are always getting better and more and different, but you know, it's all virtual reality. Now, if you watch, if you if you enjoy the matrix like I do, you know, I think I think the matrix is is, is the perfect story of, of the course of miracles. Because everything that you think is real, none of it's real. I mean, we're actually the egos, uh, we're slaves to the ego thought system. And, and, and in the matrix, people went to work. They had a so-called good life. They, they, they bought their groceries, hopefully in the same place they bought them last week. They, and they were, they were happy or they weren't happy. They were depressed. It doesn't matter. But they had jobs and all that. But none of it was real. Not one thing was real. It was virtual reality. That's what this world is, virtual. And now they're going to give you a better version of vir this is a what's coming up, coming attractions, coming to your neighborhood is a better version of what you're going through now. Over to you. Yeah, you know, you talk about virtual reality. I went to uh, a couple of years ago to the Van Gogh exhibit down in Miami, and you put on, what was so fascinating is you put on these glasses, 
And you're literally going through Van Gogh's paintings. You're going through it. You're there. You're going through the forest. You're going through. You're literally in it. You're in it. I just thought that was so fascinating and so beautiful because, yeah, of course, it's there. It shows you. Look at the illusion. You know, we get we feel peaceful because it was just so it was just so awesome, you know, and of course, it's not real. Are we really floating through the painting? No, but it takes you there. So technology takes you to places that is not real, like just nothing. It makes you see that nothing is real uh, and that, uh, you know, we just uh we just see things all the time that show us things, whether <laughs> they'd be happy or not. I just want to jump in for a second. Yes, you, go ahead. Like, like today's virtual reality, you got you got to put on the goggles so so you're seeing something that that's amazing, like Van Gogh, etc. But the ego did the same thing with the Son of God. He, he gave him eyes that don't see. You have eyes that don't see. You have ears that don't hear, and a brain that doesn't think. But Put it on so that you 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 are seeing things by projection makes perception and a projection makes perception. You're not seeing anything. You're seeing your own thoughts projected out on a screen. That's virtual reality in what we call the real world. No, this is not the real world. This is a world of virtual reality or AI. This is a world of AI. Back to you. Yes, it is. And it's amazing what is yet to come with that. You know, what will we see really uh, relating to AI? Uh, this program that I saw yesterday, if you get Nova, I found it somehow, Nova, N-O-V-A. Uh, so I scooted the internet and got, I had heard about it. And it was just uh, fascinating. Uh, really, uh, not real, obviously. I mean, we say that it's just uh, it, it, on s some level, of course, it's, it's real because you're really uh, looking at it as this is what the future is going to be. But uh, it's uh, just an incredible new thing that just, you know, comes about. Things change every day. They just, it just keeps changing. And what we want to do now is get back to love and feel that. And that's all that counts. Only the, only the love is real. Only, only the love. And you are love. Pretending to be what you're not. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, is oh, that oh, Yes, I'm the great pretender. <laughs> to be what I'm not, you see. <laughs> you talk about the great pretender. I'll just tell you, I think I must have been 12 years old. My friend and I loved the great pretender. It was the new hit song by the Platters. And we were looking for that album. Apparently, they were all sold out. I was 12 years old at the time. And we went to some department store and we're asking the manager, do you know, do you know uh, where the great pretender is? And he says, baby tenders are on the sixth floor. <laughs> baby uh, tenders are on the sixth floor. <laughs> I remember that brought back a memory to me. See that? That's actually what this world is. <laughs> it's a dream of let's pretend that daddy doesn't love us. So, right. so we, we have to do it ourselves. <laughs> right, I right. do it myself. <laughs> yes, exactly. We do it better by ourselves. Yes. I love you. Hi, Red Wayne. <laughs> Tell you, Sharon. Hey. It's time to say blessings, everyone. Thank you so much, Lynn. Everybody here, Karen down in the room. Karen, I'm very happy to see that 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 you're feeling good enough to be. Yes, back. I was hearing yeah. Karen yesterday. I think your session today was absolutely fantastic. Really? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I never and know. Yesterday, there is no I reason. listened to yours because I was teaching. I listened to it last night and I just got so much out of it. Yeah, it's very helpful. Oh, well, I think it's great for you. Thank you. I do. That's well, what makes it all work. Okay. Okay. Love all right. You. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, go ahead, Dov. I'm sorry. I just said love, Myrna. Love all. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys, so much. And and uh, I just wanted to pop in and say, uh, if you haven't watched or you didn't watch uh, that HBO series called Westworld, um, that is a perfect, I mean, this is a whole example of uh, that, you know, the AI 
uh, becoming sentient and, you know, having physical bodies and going about on the world, world and doing things and, and saying, hey, how come I have to be your slave now? I'm, I'm the same as you. And so I think, I think it's so beautiful. <laughs> Westworld <laughs> started, it started with Yul Brenna in the movie. Just That's an old movie, yeah. Yeah, it's an, it's an old movie. So now there's a new series about that, is that what you're saying? Yes, a series about it. It's amazing. I mean, what's it called again? I, 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 West I, World. West World. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, West okay. World. It's mm. old. They, they, they haven't. They, 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 the series ended. They were, They have not made a fifth series, and everybody's begging them to do that. Uh, but it is really. It t gives you a whole lot to think about. Uh, the, our mind and how we work and uh, it's really pretty amazing a lot of violence uh, so be prepared for that but you know they're only killing uh, robots uh, you know this I mean <laughs> this is really pretty crazy um, anyway uh, it's all about it's all about how the ego works so anyway uh, thank you so much Dove and Myrna and I'm